And now it's time to chain fire freedom with Clover Tech Talk. Here's your host, Chris Dover. Welcome back, friends, to another episode of Clover Tech Talk. And today we're going to talk with Mark and Caitlin from Stone Range Gunsmithing. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of house cleaning and tell you about CloverTac.com. And if you go over to CloverTac.com, you can uh, contact us through there for your comments, questions, concerns, and suggestions. You can also check out the CloverTac Thoughts blog. We've got a good one up uh, that went up today dealing with the uh, comment about the 93 million gun deaths a day in uh, uh, in the country here. And uh, so that's a good one on the Clover Tech Thoughts blog. And also while you're over there, if you shop any of those great affiliates and sponsors, you will be supporting uh, what we do here uh, on Clover Tech Talk. I have Mark and Caitlin on the line from Stone Range Gunsmithing. How are you guys today? We're doing well. Yep, we're doing great. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, going, uh, Stone Range Gunsmithing, if you will. I know you guys are located there outside of Tyler. Uh, tell us a little bit of uh, how you guys got started and uh, what uh, what you guys have to offer there. I got started for me as a, as a hobby. Um, I'd been messing with guns since I was a kid. And then uh, I was a firefighter and a medic, and I did that for 15 years and was getting ready to retire from it. And uh, I was working for the NRA at the Whittington Center as a camp nurse. They have a summer camp down there, and some guys down there suggested I look into gunsmithing. And uh, I didn't think you could make a living at it, and I hadn't even considered it. But uh, one of the best schools in the nation happened to be right up the road from there, and uh, so we went. I started going to school there after I retired from the uh, fire department. And uh, it's a two-year program. You spend 40 hours a week for two years learning about uh, every aspect of gunsmithing there is, and that's how it began. And how long ago was that? Oh, uh, I can't we just five, years. Ago. It's five years. Five years or so. Well, it all started probably closer to seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I think yeah. the uh, I think everything um, in the gun industry at that particular time had gotten had gotten fairly lucrative with uh, with the administration we had in office there. So uh, you probably mm-hmm. you probably yeah. picked a, picked a good time to get into it. <laughs> well, we did end up moving out of Colorado when he was done with his schooling because. Politically, things were turning for the worst in Colorado, so we came came over to good old Texas at the time right. um, and started up shop here. And, and we've we basically worked ourselves out of a spare bedroom <laughs> up to a up to a storefront, which has been nice. Right, and uh, what um, what do you guys offer there? Uh, what what's the the range of uh, of services that you guys offer? It's it's a pretty full gamut of what we do. Um, we do in, uh, in kind of any of your uh, customizations. You know, we'll do barrel threadings and blueprintings and cut serrations into your slides and barrel portings and that kind of stuff. We do basic repairs and full restorations. We do hot salt blowing, Belgian blowing, slow rust blowing. Um, you know, any of your... We get, a, we get a lot of guys who've been to other... Um, gunsmiths in the area or even outside of the area and they've gone to two or three of them and either they won't touch the gun or they've it's been touched and kind of messed up and they'll end up usually coming to us and they say look you could just we can take care of it all right here um you don't even have to send it out of town a lot of times uh, because a lot of people send off for services that we can offer here at our shop right so we're, we're pretty excited that we brought that to tyler right and on uh on the blue end, uh, for some folks out there that may not be may not be familiar with the different things that you you talked about, what uh, what's the differences in the in the Belgian and the slow rust and that sort of thing? Well, uh, a Belgian blue is a slow rust blue that's fast. <laughs> so 
So the old style way of bluing shotguns and that kind of thing that have that real satin, um, it's not a wet ink look like a hot salt blue is. It's, uh, it, it's a, it's a very satin look because it's an acid that kind of etches into the, the metal as it oxidizes it black. And, uh, the Belgian is the fast version of rust blue. Um, rust blue, you paint an acid on it, you put it in a humid, warm environment, and let it sit for several days, and the gun turns black. Um, and that's that's how they used to blue blue guns back in the day. And then the, um, Belgian is the same thing, but it works faster because you use heat and boiling water and that kind of thing to expedite the process. But it has it has the same look really. And then hot salt bluing is. Uh, the submersive bath that uh, gives it that dark wet ink look. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. And uh, what would you say out of out of all your out of all your services? Uh, what do, what do you guys probably do the most of there? It's well, we're kind of split down the middle. Yeah, yeah, it's split between repair. Repair can tends to be a good bread and butter thing because everybody has a gun that needs repaired and right. uh, those are usually in and, in and out pretty quick mm-hmm. and then uh, um, gun builds you know people building a, their bolt action that can knock the hair off and add it a thousand yards type thing right right the custom and, build. and rest and some restorations in there too so sure it's kind of split yeah what uh what would be the most interesting thing you, you think you've seen as far as a restoration come through? Oh. <laughs> There's a lot of them. I don't know. Um, well, that's good. Ones that are kind of kind of fun are people that bring in this gun and it's in a box or boxes or, or coffee cans in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Ziploc bags. I've seen and, those. Well, yeah. yeah, we had a guy for, uh, what was that? It was a uh, side by side. Oh yeah, the crescent. Mm-hmm. We um, had a couple of those. Yeah, the guy comes in. He's like, "Look, I got, I think three guns. I think I'm not sure, and they're all in this big box, and it's just pieces." Oh wow, he had three mixed and, together uh, in the same box. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. He's like, like Legos. He's that had was all fun. these parts, yeah. and he always wanted to build a gun out of it, and it never happened. Can we get it done? Like, yeah, sure, why not? And uh, you know, so you start taking all these parts of different models of guns and and retrofitting them, and you get them to all fit together nice and seamlessly, and retool them and polish on them, and you know, eventually we had a working side by side crescent arms model something or other. Ah, and, uh, <laughs> right. And then, and then he took he took it all the way to West Virginia to present it to the at the family reunion. So it was really cool. Oh, that to was be part of that. Oh yeah, that would uh, yeah that mm-hmm. does sound neat. On the um, on the custom rifles that you do, what um, what's what's some of the nicer ones that you that you've done as far as those go? Um. You know, it, it, it runs a full gamut, so it's hard to say. Mm-hmm. Mauser 98s are still popular. We're building a, uh, a custom thumbhole stock out of a um, $500 piece of Australian walnut right now. You know, and the gun's going to be accurized and everything's seamless. You know, the gun's going to look like it grew out of the wood. And, right. Um, you know, and that's just a Mauser 98. Nothing mm-hmm. special about it that gun it's just gets retooled so it's more accurate and pretty right and uh, you know and it's put into real expensive wood and it'll shoot incredibly accurately and you know the Mauser action is a bomb proof action you know the other one is uh, uh, Remington 700s are wildly popular sure and those can be made very accurate and very tight um, you know but uh I'm working on a 1903 right now, a Springfield 1903, and um, doing the same thing with it, you know, blueprinting it and putting it. Uh, I don't think we're going to put this one in the stock, actually. I think he's going to build his own stock on it. Oh, interesting. But, uh, right. Right. Yeah, you know, it, it runs the gamut. 
Sure. And what? Um, it's, an, it's really whatever the customer wants to do. Right. How far right. they want to go, or how much they bring to the table, or. <laughs> well, all of that. you know, when you're a, a full service shop, I mean that's the, um, that's the perk of taking something to a, a full service shop. Is it sounds like you guys whatever uh, that particular customer wants done or needs done, uh, y'all have a way to handle that in house, and. Um, uh, a lot of these other yep. other guys that have to send stuff out may discourage certain things that a customer wants uh, simply because they have to send it out. So, um, right, what, like, um, like right now, one of the guns that we're building is a uh, it's an old Remington uh, rolling block. It's a Remington number one. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But we took the barrel off it. We retooled the action. We put a we uh, built an octagon barrel, and it's a uh, twenty eight. 28 inch long barrel um, and it's a one inch bull barrel and it's now chambered in 6.5 creek more oh wow I mean, it's, it, it's ridiculous I mean who that's, needs that but that's, you know, that's, uh, you know that's this sounds really cool that so, is definitely you know, interesting it. that I know that 6.5 creed more has, has become a very popular round and that, that's what I was mm-hmm. going to ask I was going to ask what do you what do you find generally with the custom guys is there one caliber that that they seem to seem to prefer over mm-hmm. another? Um, I know that six five Creedmoor is is pretty popular and, and historically a three oh eight has been. Is there? Uh, yeah, do you, do you find there's one over another? More popular for sure. Um, the thirty calibers are still king. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's yeah. a three oh eight or a, a three hundred Win Mag or a thirty out six, thirty caliber is still king um, in the custom guns. We did that. We did that one rechambering for the one who for the person who was um, doing his reloads. Is that right? Oh, the thirty thirty. Yeah, guy built yeah. a pretty bolt action um, off of a Mauser, a mm-hmm. small ring Mauser, and uh, which you know that's tricky. You have to retool the magazine and everything. Right. Uh, but uh, so he he reloaded his own thirty thirty. And his overall length of the cartridge was about twenty-five thousandths of an inch longer than typical, so it would not work in any lever action mm-hmm. because the the length of the cartridge has to do with how that gun feeds on on pretty much all lever actions out there. Correct. Right. So he had the bolt action, and uh, so we the chamber was uh, custom reamed for him so that the lead was a little bit longer and um, the lead portion of the chamber. I mean. And uh, so he has the only gun like his on the planet. Right. Hey, that's that's the name of the game when you go when you go custom. That's why those guys generally spend the big bucks. You know, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What about um, what about pistols and and revolvers? What type of what type of work do you, do you guys do and offer uh, for those? We do a lot. We do a lot on pistols and revolvers. Um, 1911 is still king of the game. Mm-hmm. I know that upsets sure. all the Glock people, but it's still the most popular one to have worked on and customized and made pretty. And you can make 1911s into a very, very nice gun. Um, you know, Smith and Wesson revolvers and Ruger revolvers are are wildly popular. Mm-hmm. You know, um, those can be made into very nice guns, very good competitor guns, or hunting guns, or just plinking or whatever self defense. But uh, mm-hmm. trigger well, we jobs. Do, we do some custom. Bumpers. Yeah, I was going to jump in there on the trigger jobs. But we also we get that for a lot of people, but we also see it done a lot for women out there. And I will speak as a woman. I always want trigger job done on my pistol or revolver because mm-hmm. it changes the game. And um, I always tell people who are carrying too, you want to you don't want to think twice about what you're carrying. And having a good trigger job just takes another element of guessing out of the game right. so i always brag on his trigger jobs we have a one coming in next week that i promise him like your gun will be different all the things you just complained about he will he will change that for you but just that one one thing um and that's that we see a lot of that done on the on the pistols and revolvers right right um what would you guys say if you you know what's the what's the one What's the one firearm? I'm going to open it up to all of them and say, what is the <laughs> what is the one firearm 
that you guys dread to see come through the door? That we dread to see? That you dread. That you oh, think, that you say, oh, my God, not another one of those. You know, I'm going to run, I'm gonna run hide. hide. I don't want to, I don't even want to look at that. Yeah, anything made by High Point, I won't touch it. No High Point. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. that's fair yeah. enough. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the weird things we've had come in, we can't, had come in almost, what, three or four of them in three or four months were the Ravens. That I think the, people were inheriting that those were the raven, <laughs> the raven those, arms. <laughs> those are not good either. <laughs> right. Designed to be fired twice and thrown in the river. Right. Yeah. Raven arms <laughs> is, in case you didn't know, I was doing some homework the other night. Uh, I actually wrote a blog post today in light of the idiot governor that um, talked about the 93 million gun deaths a day. Um, and in my yeah. in going through my in going through my homework to write the blog post for that today, uh, I ran across some information I had of of fire uh, most common firearms used in in crimes, and it's interesting you mentioned that Raven. That's that's actually number three on the list of firearms yeah. used in yeah. crimes. Yeah, so, um, it's interesting. I, it's, <laughs> that makes me a little more optimistic oh. uh, as a. Uh, uh, as a, a carrier, um, that the criminals out there are, are prefer something like that. That that definitely gives me an advantage if if I'm ever in a in a situation up against a raven. <laughs> so uh, that's true. <laughs> now I'm I'm looking through your uh, looking through your website now. That's uh, StoneRangeGunsmithing.com, dot com. Correct. That's correct. That's right. Um. And I show here that um, you guys have a have a fairly low uh, FFL transfer fee. Is that is that something you guys do pretty regular for for folks in the area? Yeah, we do a couple a day. Um, yeah, it's it's a fifteen dollar per transaction, not per gun, but per transaction. And uh, so, if you order two or three of them at a time, then uh, as long as we don't have to do multiple gun reporting. Um, then it's just fifteen dollars. If we do have to do multiple gun, it's twenty dollars, and it's twenty dollars for up to five of them at once. Wow! Um, because we—that's a customer service thing for us. Sure. We're not looking to make a ton of money on it. I mean, we have to charge for our time some, but we're not looking to make a bunch of money on the transfers. What we use it as is a marketing thing, because somebody comes in and says, "Hey, you know, that's a Smith and Wesson. That's a, it's a forty-four, you know." you have to haul down to get the trigger to pull, we can make that trigger less than half. Right. And, uh, you know, so we we actually get business from uh, these transfers. Sure. And I've, yeah. I've been uh, I've been told on several occasions by, by several dealers and whatnot that, uh, that there there's a few out there, you'll, you'll find a few every now and then that advertise that they don't have a transfer fee. Uh, or something like that, and mm. I've been told by by quite a few folks that the ATF they badly frown on that. That they they sort of expect you guys to to charge something for for that transfer uh, because in order to have the FFL yeah. license, you you've got to be you've got to prove you're in the business. So yeah, it's yeah, we we just haven't had any problems with our transfers. Yeah, if you have an FFL, they want you to be profiting. Mm-hmm. Right, profitable. You, you have to have a, a business if you're doing an FFL. Sure. You can't just as a Joe Blow homeowner type, you know, go get an FFL so you can buy cheaper guns. They don't like that. So if you're profiting somehow off your FFL, they, that's all they care about. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, the mm-hmm. the days of the kitchen table FFL, I guess you could call it, are, are pretty much over. Yeah, they, they, exactly. They really frown on that sort of thing <laughs> yeah. nowadays. All right. Yeah, we we've met some good people through our tra- through our transfers. In fact, we have one guy who really likes to buy from us. He says he always enjoys coming by after work on his way home. He's all the way from Nagadoches, and he's like I just always enjoy coming in and uh, and just meeting with us and picking up his transfer. And and that means a lot. We have people who come from Palestine and White House just to use us. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that- that's always amazed me is when people will drive two or three hours to come to our shop 
you know, it, it's it's a real honor. Sure, mm-hmm. and that's and that's generally uh that's generally a testament, uh, you know, just from our our conversation here today. Um, you guys sound really really down to earth, you know, not at all snooty, and and you get that with uh, with some of these shops around, unfortunately. Um, they they really they tend to talk over over people's people's head a lot, uh, and they're they're a little bit intimidating. And um, it you, can't you, be. You don't I went wanna... in the shop yesterday. We had to we had to farm something out, and I went went in. <laughs> like, gosh, I feel I feel uncomfortable. Even <laughs> though so we're doing business together, um, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to be on board. And part of this was to help give a friendlier face and try and get some women in and. And we, a lot of our youth shooters, too, we do offer a 10% discount for youth, youth guns. Okay. Or for rather the guns that youth are using for their competitions. Um, so we've worked with folks down in Art and at uh, the Gorman, I think the Catholic school, the Gorman school, mm. and the Grace Cougar team. And that's always been fun to do. And that's, uh, that's interesting to know for, for us uh, and for, for me as well. Um, uh, I don't right. know. I don't know how much you you followed up on me and what I do, but um, I am the manager of the the 4-H shooting sports club here in Cherokee County. Uh, also, uh, right. I'm a I'm a state qualified instructor, meaning I train uh, other 4-H coaches. So um, that's good to know because I can I can definitely pass that along to some of them, and and um, I right. know that I know that specifically we use when we when we get started. One of the one of the best little rifles I found, especially for your kids that are, because the 4-H shooting sport starts at eight years old, and some of these eight-year-olds. In fact, I've got one coming up uh, in September that she will she will be joining, and it blew my mind. I found out uh, she's a little sister to uh, a girl we've already got, and it blew my mind when I found out a couple of weeks ago she'll be eight in September. Uh, <laughs> she looks like a three-year-old. I mean, she's she's itty bitty. Mm-hmm. She's a runt. And uh, so we use <laughs> we use the Savage Rascals, and they require uh, they require a little bit of little bit of work on them. Honestly, with that with that mm-hmm. rear sight, yeah, it works pretty decent. Um, but there's a little bit of machining that you really need to do to to get them right. And then of course replacing that um, that standard front sight. It comes with a, a lollipop style sight and putting an actual target globe on there and that's great for the little kids like that so there's definitely a, a need uh if you have um if you have the youth shooters out there there's definitely a need to to have a have a good gunsmith on your payroll so to speak um uh, another right. thing and we, and I didn't, we know it adds up to it really adds up getting youth involved in shooting and so like we can't take too much off but we do want to encourage it right um because kids outgrow guns like they do their pants. <laughs> so it's just, it's, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's actually becoming a, a, a popular thing is installing a, uh, um, reco- a uh, recoil system the, um, mm-hmm. that uh, will grow with the kid. Mm-hmm. And so you can, you can grow the gun an inch and a half. You know, so we started out fitting them at nothing, and then it'll grow for an inch and a half, which is a long way. I mean, you can go from a from a pretty small kid to a, a older teenager on the one gun. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what uh, we did a couple weeks and ago. And once you get to yeah. that point, you swap the stock out, you know, because they're more or less done growing, and sure, you know, you're done. <laughs> right. And I'm assuming mm-hmm. you guys do. We're, we're sort of talking rifle. I'm, I'm sure you guys probably do shotgun fitting, stuff like that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a that's a pretty big deal there. Um, very important that your shotgun fits you, uh, especially if you get into the competition shooting. Right. Exactly. Yeah. People start out with shotguns and they, they don't they don't understand until they shoot a gun that actually fits them. Your eyeball is your rear sight. Right. You know. Right. So if, it, if if it's not hitting the same spot on the gun every single time, in essence, your rear sight's moving around. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's exactly Good luck. right. Yes. You know? Yes, it is. Um, okay. Well, uh, tell everybody if you would one last time here how they um, how they get in touch with you if they need some of your services. 
We do have a website, as you mentioned earlier, the www.stonerange.com. Sorry, stonerangegunsmithing.com. Um, but I'm also mostly active on the Facebook page where I try and keep people updated on what we're doing in the shop, um, things that we offer. Sometimes people don't know what a gunsmith will do until they start seeing the projects that we're doing in our shop. And, and they say, wait a minute, I want to do that too. So that's where I really stay um, updated right now is on Facebook. And you can also give us a call, 903-707-3491. And then we are also open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at 11, 7, sorry, Mark, help me out here, 11, 11 76. Highway 64 East. So All right, great. There's lots well, of ways um, to find us. <laughs> right. Well, Mark, yeah. Caitlin, I appreciate you joining us today, and uh, hopefully we can have you back on soon. Sounds yeah, good. that'd be great. Hopefully we'll meet someday, too. I know you're a little bit away from us, but hopefully someday we'll, our paths right. will cross. Well, I, I get to Tyler pretty okay. often, so maybe I can maybe I can drop in one day. Well, yeah, and you, you're welcome to drop off raffle tickets, too. I know you do that every year for fundraising. So right. We'd be happy to have some on the counter. We can we yep. can certainly okay. certainly do that. Having a location there in Tyler helps, uh, without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Well, All right, well, thank you I, for the opportunity. I do appreciate it. You guys have, have a good day. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Clover Tech Talk. I want to once again thank... Uh, Mark and Caitlin from Stone Range Gunsmithing for joining us today. And if you uh, need any gunsmithing services, definitely give those guys a shout. Uh, see if they are able to help you. I want to also once again invite you over to CloverTac.com to check out everything going on over there as well. Well, guys, we've had fun. We appreciate you joining us today. And until next time, be safe. We will see you. Bye. Thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. If you think we're doing a good job here on Clover Tech, don't forget to subscribe. And if you would like to support us, you can do so by going to CloverTech.com and shopping with one of our awesome affiliates or sponsors.